Well, hi, this is Shirley from Shirley's Art Ventures, and today I am going to show you my dish cloths. I have been making dish cloths for a number of years, and my style has kind of changed over that time. So, we're just going to go through what I have and talk about them, and I hope you enjoy this little dish cloth video. So, I started making dishcloths long, probably a long time ago, and you know, just the traditional dishcloth is like a double crochet across, and this is when I used up leftover yarn in, in the variegated shades. And if you look, this it's not very even, it's skinny on the bottom, it's fatter on this side, and I think I've gotten a little better since then, but you know, I do have a number of, of those that are kind of in different sizes and <clears throat> excuse me and then this one I added a ridge to it and I put you know a blue around the outside but it is still it's still kind of wonky um, this one is probably slightly less wonky but they still work they still serve their purposes and this one has ridges on both sides and I, I started off using the variegated yarn because I really liked it. I like the changing colors. And I don't know, I, I've gotten a lot better at crocheting since these, since these earlier ones. This is one that's a little later, so you can see it's a little more square. You know, at first it was sometimes hard to know how many times, you know, I, I don't want to count. So if I don't count, it, it kind of automatically changes sizes. So, and you know, the, we got these great big ones compared to a smaller one. So anyway, they still work as dishcloths and they are for sale, but I've kind of evolved since then. I started doing what was called mosaic crochet and that's a different kind of a pattern. I, this is like one of my first ones. You, you work with two colors of yarn. You go back and forth with the two colors. And on the back is kind of striped. On the front, you got a little mosaic pattern. But it's, it's hard to tell on this one because like my other ones, it's kind of wonky. And then you have ends sticking out on all the ends. So then you got to do a, you got to cover them up somehow. So this is like my first experiment with mosaic crochet. Uh, here's one that shows the ends. It's actually a little bit better with the mosaic pattern. I... I think I probably made this pattern up, but you can, you can see how the pattern works in there and and then the ends. I didn't crochet around the ends. So I thought, well, I could do pictures in mosaic crochet. So I tried to do a tulip. I kind of made up my own design. If you look at the back, you can see it's kind of striped. The front, you know, you can actually see the tulip. And I don't know, I was just having a sizing problem. so. Like the other ones, it's, it's kind of wonky. And this is really, it's really thick because, you know, you the mosaic crochet, you are working with two um, colors all the time. Well, then I, I guess something that occurred to me, there was a, a working in a square kind of made it easier. So here's probably one of the earlier ones I worked in a square. And I was still having counting problems. You really do need to have a little uh, thing that tells you where you're at so you know where, where your beginning is because when you do your step ups, you know, it will get longer. So, but anyway, uh, I could form ridges down the side of this. So this was, you know, a lot easier to get the square. So I really, really started delving into that. And I kind of have a pile of these here that are kind of square in nature. And then when you start playing around with colors, you can see here um, how, it, how interesting it is. And then you can start playing around with the texture here. And the back looks like this. And this, this is really thick, so you could, you know, use it as a pot holder too, which I did. I did make some pot holders. These are super thick and they're doubled over and it is mosaic crochet and in the back you stitch in the back. So I have, I have three of these and uh, 
pink one. I think one looks like this and like this. So, so those are interesting and fun. And then Drina, my friend, wanted me to do like a solid color with a border around the outside. And each of these have, you know, the patterns in the middle there. And so I have a bunch of these and I did scrubbies with these. And I don't know, I just like using up the different colors and seeing what kind of pattern I can come up with. Uh, I think this is a really, really pretty plum pattern. And then, you know, I oh, I always like to use what's in my in my bag there. I don't always like to buy new, but, you know, I use what's in the bag. I went around the outside with a very colorful one. Yeah, I think that was the first one I showed you. And then, oh dear, got to start experimenting with shapes, too. So, here's one. I try to do a one, two, three, four, five, six, a, a hexagon here. That turned out kind of cool. And here's one. I, I attempted to do a triangle. Here's the back side of that. It, it turned out semi-cool. Not too 100% thrilled with it, but it will work. It will serve its purpose. And I, I guess I thought I had some other shapes here. Oh, maybe maybe I do. I don't know. But then, then, you know, I'm never satisfied with one stitch. I have to learn a, another stitch. So I got a book on the waterfall crochet, which is this one. And I think I did a tutorial on this. And this is kind of cool because you crochet like all the red first and then you have these openings and then you add the second color in. So I did a bunch of these and I donated them to the nursing home. You can hook them together and make them into an afghan. It's kind of like a granny square afghan. You can use regular yarn for that. But I thought, well, these would be nice and pretty dishcloth. So there's a bunch of different patterns of those that I've done. And then this is kind of a waffle stitch. And so it's you, you go around the posts. And in doing that, if you do it correctly, you get like these little squares. So I thought, I thought this was kind of cool. And then... I wanted to experiment with Tunisian crochet, which is interesting in itself. So I believe this is my first experiment with Tunisian crochet. It's a cross between crochet and knitting. And it, well, I shouldn't say this is my first one. I did like three before that I didn't like them, so I took them out. And it has a curling factor to it. And by adding the secondary color, I was able to keep track of things. That was my challenge at first. I wasn't able to keep track. It was kind of going wonky sided. And since I've been crocheting a lot more, I they're really getting more square. So this is a Tunisian sample. And then around the outside is just traditional crochet. And then here's another one, a little bigger Tunisian. And like with the other ones, um, you're working with two colors. So you, you never cut off. You just keep bringing your two colors up. So, yeah. So anyway. So those are kind of my different crochet techniques to make dishcloths. And these are all on sale. So if you're interested in buying these, just, just let me know. Because they're, they're $4 a piece. Um, the, the, big, the big heavy ones are $10 a piece. But I have them here. And I think I'm beginning more crochet cotton because a friend of mine... Um, is getting some from her mother who passed away and I don't know I think she had a lot so anyway I hope you enjoy my tutorial on the different techniques I use to make my dishcloths so have a great day and we'll talk to you again soon